It's seven months since Virgin Galactic's space plane crashed in the Californian desert, killing one of the pilots, Mike Oldsbury. Now, one of his colleagues who witnessed the accident has spoken to the BBC about what happened. Dave Mackay was flying just behind the spaceship when it broke up. Our transport correspondent Richard Westcott has the story, and he joined us an hour ago from Virgin Galactic's headquarters. We're in the middle of the Mojave Desert, outside the wind is howling, the planes stretch out, mountains in the distance. In here, three, four hundred engineers work three shifts every day. It's uh, twenty past six in the morning here at the moment, they're all about to arrive. Then the morning yoga session starts, I'm told, and then they're cracking on with it three shifts a day. It's fascinating because you can really see what happens with this project from, from this view in the hangar. So this big white aircraft here, which is going through a bit of maintenance at the moment, that's called White Knight 2. That's the mothership. That flies up to 50,000 feet and drops the spaceship and the rocket ignites and hopefully then they go on up to space. Now, um, the pilot we spoke to, Dave Mackay, is the chief pilot here and he was flying White Knight 2 on the day of the accident. He was the guy that released that space plane and he's talking about it to us for the first time. Just quickly let me take you over here. This is what we've come to see. That brown shell in the distance is their new spacecraft. They've been building it since 2012 and now they are ready to show it off to the world. Barren and unforgiving. 70 years ago these same desert skies heard the first aircraft breaking the sound barrier. Emerging in a hangar Virgin Galactic's attempt to make new history. After the shock of last year's crash, they're trying to rebuild. And here is the new spaceship. They actually began building this a couple of years ago, and it's fundamentally the same as the last one. It's got the same carbon composite body, but you can see it's not anywhere near finished yet. The structure is done, we are told, but they are now putting in the electronics. It's going to be the end of the year before they even begin testing this can't actually show you inside because it's restricted but there's not that much to see no cockpit controls but the first passengers were meant to be floating in space seven years ago and even now the boss won't commit to a launch date what we're doing is not easy right it's a historic thing and the reason that it hasn't happened over the last hundred years is because it is hard okay so it could be people in there you hope within 18 months a couple of years so I'm not giving you a specific date because I really don't want to put pressure on our engineers. But what I do want to convey is that we're relatively close. So we don't have, you know, five years to go or anything like that. I know it looks like a computer game, but this is real. A successful test from 2013. It shows just how dramatic the Virgin ride would be. But cutting edge technology is risky. Eight months ago, the first spaceship broke apart after one of the crew pulled a lever too early. It looks like this one in the simulator. Co-pilot Mike Allsbury was killed. His colleague Dave Mackay was just a few hundred feet away in the aircraft that had just launched the rocket. Speaking exclusively to the BBC, he told me about the day. That shock and uh, sadness, uh, we, we all knew him well, so um, there, there's that side of it too. To get over uh, and then you got to you got to look forward we feel positive about the future and uh, we feel that uh, we owe it to you know people like Mike Alsbury and others who um, have uh, who have uh, made paid the ultimate sacrifice in the past to, to make this succeed Virgin says it's made some changes but insists the rocket ship design is fundamentally safe the company's under pressure but maintains this dream in the desert will still come true. Now this is a, a slightly surreal place. As I said, there's about 300 engineers, 500 people working here. It's a very close-knit community. A lot of them have given up jobs in smart cities and so on to move here. No offence, but it, it is the middle of nowhere. They've moved their families here. So very, very close-knit community, and you can imagine the impact of that accident because a lot of them uh, knew Mike Allsbury very well so had a big impact but what they keen to stress we've been here a couple of days what everyone keeps coming up to me and saying is that they want to make this thing happen they want to make this dream happen incidentally if you uh, if you want to see more of Dave Mackay more of that interview it is on the BBC website there's a longer version for you okay Richard in terms of the public perception it is that this will happen that it's beginning to look rather easy and that's that's a complacency which obviously is not shared where you are 
No, it's not. I mean, again, what they keep stressing to me, and the people you talk to have often worked for NASA, they've worked for Boeing, they've worked for all these sort of big companies. They're used to making quite radical aircraft designs and so on. What they keep stressing is the reason the deadlines keep slipping, the reason there are problems is because this is really hard. And this is about putting ordinary people into space. It's not even NASA test pilots. It's beyond that. They've got to get the safety higher than that. It's got to be reasonably priced. So they keep stressing, look, this isn't happening because we are breaking new ground. This is radical. It's different. And that is why it's taking so long. Richard Westcott there in the Mojave Desert. A quick line of uh, news coming in from Alton Towers. Following